There is a metric ton of TV technologies available right now. And perhaps the two most prevalent you'll see advertised everywhere is some version of QLED and some version of OLED. And as you look to maybe buy a TV sometime this year or even next year, it's hard to look at the technologies and understand which one might be best for you. So I made a video a few years ago comparing these technologies and over a million of you liked it. The technology has changed a lot since then. So I wanted to revisit QLED versus OLED and help you find the right set. All right, but for right now, let's talk about the main differences between QLED and OLED TVs to give those who don't know kind of a base of knowledge of what these TV technologies are and what they do. So I'll put timestamps and chapters in this video too. So if you have a particular part that you want to see and while well, you happen to be down there looking for the section of the video, subscribe button and the like button's pretty close if you want to hit one of those two or both. So starting with the one you're most likely familiar with, OLED. It stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. Basically what that means is each and every pixel in an OLED TV acts like its own light source. Think of it as millions of tiny little RGB light bulbs that can turn on and off completely independently. QLED, on the other hand, is basically a very fancy, high quality LCD panel with an equally fancy name, QLED, which means Quantum Light Emitting Diode. And QLED TVs have a layer of nanoparticles that reflect either red, green, or blue when you shine light on them. And this helps enhance the colors that a regular LCD panel would normally produce. And since QLED is largely just an improvement and iteration of traditional LCD tech, the LCD panel is always shining light through. So blocks represented in some version of dark gray, you won't get those perfect black levels and contrast that you'll get with an OLED TV, which I'll talk plenty more about. However, the upside to LCD panels is that you get a ton of brightness out of those sets. A ton of brands offer OLED TVs. Uh, we're talking Sony, Samsung, LG, and more. And they're also the evolution of OLED tech that you might see things like WOLED or QD OLED, which offer brighter overall images and color brightness to existing OLED tech. So there are steps and categories within OLED to consider. QLED uh, has some of those big players that make those panels as well. We're talking Samsung, LG, TC on Hisense. But instead of just calling it by the technology's name, most of those brands have their own unique marketing names. So if you see any version of these, it's QLED. So Samsung has Neo QLED. LG has QNED. Hisense is calling it ULED. But thankfully, TCL just calls theirs QLED. And as I go through and talk about these TVs and technologies, I'll have links down below, I think some of the best examples of them. If I could break down the two technologies like this, think of OLED as having the best black levels that you can have, and think of QLED as having a brighter panel than you would get with OLED. So now you have a basic understanding of the difference between two technologies, let me get a little bit deeper into each one. While QLED or QLED technology does have some advantages, and there are a lot of them, there are certain areas where it just can't compete with OLED. So first, if you walk around to Best Buy, you will see those OLED TVs are crazy thin. And they can be that thin, because they don't have to have a whole LED backlit panel. Some OLED TVs even have gone as far as putting all their hardware in a separate box, so you're left with a panel that is incredibly thin that can almost hang like a frame on your wall. And since it's got individual diodes that can light up independently, that also means each diode can turn off independently. And this is why OLEDs have historically come at premium prices. OLEDs are known for signature black levels and infinite contrast because these pixels are just being turned off. So when you're seeing black on an OLED TV, it's not showing an extremely dark version of gray that you're thinking is black. It's actually just black because those diodes are turned off. And because of those diodes, you have nearly unlimited viewing angles. No matter what angle you view that TV, there's no shift in color or dimming when you look at that set. Even at extreme angles, it looks exactly the same if you're viewing it straight on. OLED TVs also offer incredibly high response times, so you have the option to almost completely remove motion blur if you want to. And this is most ideal for things like watching sports, playing video games, where you want kind of extra clarity for the images. And there's a lot of positives but they're not perfect. Brightness used to be the Achilles heel of OLED TVs, but in the last few years, it's become less and less of an issue. There are still OLED panels being sold that don't get as bright. So if you have a TV in a room with a ton of light, the image might look dim to you. It's not as common anymore, something definitely to be aware of. 
The biggest disadvantage is screen burn and image retention, and similar issues from old tube and plasma TVs. If you're watching sports or news or playing games, that have graphics that are stationary for a very, very prolonged period of time, there's a slight chance those graphics might remain visible for days or weeks, or even permanently. To be fair, this issue has mostly gone away. For most OLED technology, it only happens in very extreme circumstances that most will never, ever experience. However, QD OLED, the newest iteration of OLED that has a layer of quantum dots over the panel, is experiencing those image retention and burn issues at a higher rate uh, than other kinds of OLED tech. I bought an OLED TV for myself, and I don't think about burn-in at all, and I watch a ton of sports, and so I've had no retention there, but it's something to at least bear in mind. And because you're getting individual diodes and generally panel thinness, usually the price of OLED tends to be higher than QLED as well. So while buying the right TV is a choice, what shouldn't be a choice is keeping information safe and secure. One in three people will be victim of identity theft. So don't be that one. And check out this video sponsor, Keeper Security. Now, you've probably heard of them. 275,000 five-star reviews. That's over a quarter of a million people who have not only trusted their security with Keeper, but thought enough of them to leave a positive review. And they do so for a reason. First of all, they are one of the foremost names in password security, and they take all the guesswork and worry out of keeping information safe and secure. So all the things you'd expect are there. Easily share passwords with friends and family while keeping that information secure and encrypted. It'll generate passwords for you. It'll fill those passwords in for you once they're generated. You don't have to remember a million passwords. All you gotta remember is one good password for your Keeper Security app. It's something that absolutely everybody needs. It'll work across any platform, any OS. Somebody who switches phones all the time. It's really easy to just download Keeper Security, put in my credentials, and all of my passwords show and are there. If you don't have Keeper Security, you're running a risk that is just not worth it. So if you wanna check it out for yourself, and you absolutely should, hit the link down below. You can get a free 30-day trial. And if you decide that you like it, I'll give you 50% off your personal or family plan with the code JFL50. All the information you need, though, will be in the description down below. All right, so talked about OLED, I wanna come back now to talk about QLED, and they can produce an extremely bright image that is color accurate right up to peak brightness. And this allows for incredibly impressive HDR images. On top of that, because of its brightness, you never have to worry about what kind of room your TV is placed in. You can have a room with all the windows, and you have absolutely no problem seeing a beautiful, bright, colorful image. Part of that is thanks to the LED backlit panel, but the other part is due to the quantum dot layer. Enhances both image brightness and color vibrancy, which gives QLED TVs their signature richness to their image quality. And with QLED TVs, you never have to worry about burning. There's also a much wider range of prices within the QLED space. Now, premium QLED TVs can creep up into OLED prices, but you can easily find them in the budget prices at like 500 bucks or less, depending on the time of year and a bunch of sales going on. Typically what you're sacrificing with those more budgetary options is higher refresh rates and resolutions that tend to matter more to the gaming crowd and people who want a higher level cinema experience at home. So if you're just looking for a good bright TV that looks great, you can find those really good options generally at amazing prices. Another perk or positive of QLED TVs is that you can future-proof yourself for way cheaper. While most TV content is still being broadcast or shown either 1080 or 4K, 8K content will come eventually. You can purchase an 8K QLED TV for a much more reasonable price than an 8K OLED TV. And oftentimes those 8K TVs will upscale 4K content for you as well into 8K. For the kind of person who only wants a bigger TV every five to 10 years, 8K QLED TVs could be worth looking into. Those are a lot of positives, but there are also some disadvantages as well. Because it's a backlit panel, it's not gonna be as thin as an OLED TV. There's still models that allow you to mount it flush to a wall, but you won't get that like razor thin display like an OLED. I'm talking about things like Samsung's Frame TV, for example. And because it's backlit panel, you're not gonna be able to produce the black levels you get from an OLED. It's always some variation of gray to represent black. And it's a crazy thing that happens to your brain. You think it's black, but if you focus on it and look or hold something black next to it, you can see it's very, very dark gray. So also viewing angles are generally much worse than OLED. You wanna kinda of wanna sit in a sweet spot for a QLED TV. If people sit off to one side or the other, the picture's gonna to tend to look faded. Also issues of blooming, and that means there's sort of a halo of sorts around very bright objects. 
In the more expensive QLED TVs, this is less of an issue versus the cheaper models, but it still exists, you know, regardless. So keep in mind that a ton of these disadvantages that I talk about with QLED TVs are not entirely noticeable to most people. The gap in quality between a QLED TV and an OLED TV has gotten so small, it's hard to tell a difference unless you have them sitting right beside one another for comparison. If we're talking about pure picture quality, I'd say OLED wins hands down. No other team technology is going to produce the black levels that OLED can. If never stood in front of an OLED, trust me, this video does not do it justice. You have to see one in person to appreciate how amazing of an image they produce, especially with the newer, very much brighter WOLED and the very bright and colorful QD OLED variations. But back to QLED versus OLED, Unless you have both types of TVs sitting side by side, it's probably not likely that the average person is going to see a huge difference. Now keep in mind that QLED is still relatively new technology in comparison to OLED, and the leaps it's made from where it started to where it is today is incredible. With each iteration, it gets closer and closer to that OLED quality as time goes on, and it's even more difficult to tell the difference between the two. Hopefully this guide between the differences between QLED and OLED technology has been helpful, help you decide which TV is going to be right for you. Both are extremely good options no matter what you get. Whether you want the black levels or the brightness or a combination of each, you can find a right set utilizing both technologies.